Good morning. Um, good morning. Good morning, mister. You have a nice dog. Um, thanks. Good morning. God's girl. How can you be so energetic at this time of the day? Um, I had a large breakfast. Hi everyone. Hi everyone, my, my name, name is Penny, Penny. And, and today is another great day. day. I mean, have, have you looked, looked at the sky? sky? A, a slight breeze, breeze, an acceptable amount of cloud cover, and not a singular grim in sight. Which, which is, is good, good, because, because I, I assure you they have a very high chance to ruin your day just by being in your immediate vicinity. For me though, it's an even better day than for most. I mean, not that I've collected data on how the day is going for every single inhabitant of Vale City. That'll take a long time. Terribly inefficient. Even so, I feel confident in my inductive reasoning that I'm having a better day than most because I recently made new friends. They're all girls enrolled at Beacon Academy. We can't really see each other because, well, I was told not to. And only one really said that she was my friend. But the other girls were her friends, too. Maybe the transitive property applies? Still, I made at least one friend. Life is better when you have lots of friends. So, since I have four new friends, or 25% of that, it's safe to speculate that I'm having an even better day than most. I can't wait to see how my day will continue with such a great start. Uh All it does! What is that? Oh, I, I didn't, didn't notice, notice, but while I was computing about my day, the bustle of the city street has died down. Everyone has fallen mostly silent, bearing a few murmurs, and they're all staring at her pointing at the sky. It's probably not a grim, because the person shouted out a question. Grim are very recognizable, so this must be something new, but equally terrifying. Let's see. Oh! A meteor! I've never seen one this close before. Well, I've never seen a meteor, period. But most people never see them this closely. And it's getting closer, isn't it? Uh-oh. It's not getting any smaller now that it's past the upper atmospheric layers. And considering its speed and trajectory... Oh, I hope the market is not too crowded at this time of day. Salutations, Skyman. Are you a bad guy? Ah, good. There was a high probability you were some kind of attacker, but I'm glad that wasn't the case, Skyman. 
for two reasons. First, I don't know your name. Affirmative. What's your name, Skyman? Nice to meet you, David. I'm Penny. Hmm? Does that mean someone threw you? I didn't see everything, but between my observation of the meteor and finding the point of impact, there was a time lapse of only 37 seconds. It would have been very hard for someone to transport you here without being seen. My guess is you were inside the meteor when it landed. You're in Vail City, capital city of Vail, specifically in an alley in the Market District area. It doesn't look like much right now because, uh, your landing kind of vacated it. That's peculiar, since it's a very important place. Maybe you've heard of the other countries? Beyond Vale, there's the nation of Vacuo to the west, Atlas to the north, and Mistral to the east. That's all a remnant. Unless someone in Atlas shot you out of a cannon, I don't know what kind of prank could be pulled. And your trajectory was too far off for that. You seem distressed. I understand, but we shouldn't linger around here for too long. The officers might be nice, but sometimes they don't understand. That's if they're willing to listen to you. Considering that you damaged a major metropolitan area with your landing, the odds of that happening are not in your favor, as they say. They take you away. That's bad. Well, I... Sorry, Skyman. Continuing the conversation will be terribly inconvenient. personal space. <laughs> this is a safe distance. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to account for possible motion sickness. Ooh, your complexion looks much, much better now.
I think you need a change of clothes. Oh, I can cover that for you. It's no trouble at all. Your size is pretty common in Vale, so I should only be a few minutes. To be safe, though, it's better if you wait for me inside that dumpster. You... don't want me to? Oh, right. Father did tell me people aren't used to the concept of altruism anymore. But he also taught me that I should help people who need a hand. So, don't worry too much and let me help you. All right, David? Sensational! Now don't move from the dumpster and wait for me to come back. I'm glad. Make clothes? Um, of course I can make clothes. That's how I got your sizes right. No bionics or robotics of any kind in immediate vicinities. Make up. <laughs> oh, right. I guess I should have bought you some food too. Oh, it's fo- You're angry at yourself? But you did nothing wrong. I don't really care about money, though. It's okay if you don't repay me. Another way? Well... There is something, but I don't want to impose. It's okay if you don't want to. Really? Oh, I'm so happy! I made a new friend! Oh, I'm sorry! <laughs> I got carried away. Well, you see, I don't have a lot of friends. And those I have, I can't see very often.
Um, I'm not really hungry, but sure. I heard about this shop in Main Street that's supposed to be very good. I see you like it. Positive. And I'm glad you're feeling better now. the first person to locate you. You... You think I'm pretty? No, I mean... I know that going by common aesthetical standards, I may be considered attractive. It's just, no one has ever said that to me. Thanks. Um, you're... pretty too? And what do we have here? You gave me a lot of trouble, young man. What kind of trick were you using to mask your aura? Hmm, no matter. We'll have plenty of time to uncover that. Now, let's make you easier to transport. Stand, young lady. I'm terribly sorry, but I can't do that. Because? Because you're going to knock David unconscious and take him to an unknown location. That was my intention, yes. And I guess if you're eager to share the blame, you can share in that fate as well. Don't worry, David. <laughs> I'm combat ready. Are you now? Oh, Spen, I'm in the middle of something. Your 
are in the middle of starting an international incident. Excuse me? The young lady who's so bravely confronting you is a special protege of the general. Salutations! She's still interfering. I notice, Glinda, but does the young man look or feel like a threat at all? He does seem rather inoffensive. But I can't just let him go, if he's involved with a meteor crash in the market. Of course not. What you can do, though, is bring both of them to me. Which I was going to do. By asking them to come along, Glinda. I may understand your irritation at having to repave the streets, but I don't think these children deserve an iron fist because of that. We'll be right there. What's your name, child? And I believe you're called Penny, young lady. Yes, ma'am. He's David. My name is Glinda Goodwitch. I'm a staff member at Beacon Academy, and- Beacon Academy? Then maybe you know Ruby! <sighs> of course someone willing to stand up to a full-fledged huntress would be an acquaintance of that girl. You're not going to detain David any more then? That depends on him and his actions, of course. But I guess we should give him the opportunity to explain himself. No, I haven't been to Beacon Academy yet. I was supposed to visit it for the first time in about six months. But it's the most famous combat academy in all of Remnant. Training the best huntsmen and huntresses of the world. The Grim, they are... I suggest you take your seats and strap in, children. We're descending. see Ruby from up here. Uh, uh, no. It was just a large bird. The school is currently on a break before the start of the semester. The majority of students are not on campus right now, which also means it will be much easier to get you to the headmasters unnoticed. The headmaster's office is located at the top of the beacon tower. Let's hurry. I'm back, headmaster. So I see. Welcome to Beacon Academy, children. I'm Ozpin, the headmaster.
And this is General Ironwood. I believe Petty is already acquainted with him. Um, good morning, sir. It seems one can take his eyes off you for more than five minutes without you taking in some stray, Penny. Penny was the first one on the scene, General. She also witnessed the events immediately prior to the crash and was in the town the whole morning. Frankly, I don't think we could have asked for a better witness. She did help protect Mr. D. Cavicus from a lapse in judgment. You misunderstand me. Penny's character was never in question. I just find it curious how she can't seem to help but form relationships with peculiar characters. So, Penny, can you tell us how your morning went? From start to finish, with any that comes to mind. Any detail, no matter how small. Every detail? If you please. Well, the sky was pretty clear. Alright, and what- The environmental temperature was 24 degrees Celsius in the shade and 28 in the sun, but the light breeze coming from the northeast brought the actual perceived temperature to 24 Celsius anyway. UV amount was acceptable, but I wouldn't have advised staying too long to possessors of sensitive epidermis. The meteoroid appeared in the sky around 10.34 a.m. bail time zone. I was alerted to its presence by the vocal reaction of one of the citizens with the exact words, HOLY JUST WHAT IS THAT?! I see, then... The size of the meteoroid was around 2 meters in diameter. I'm sorry, I couldn't get a better estimate, but the distance in the sky and the speed at which it traveled left me unable to get a proper reading on the object, which crashed into the market area at 10.36 a.m. I was worried about the possibility of injured people, so I directed myself to the extrapolated point of impact post-haste and managed to perceive police officers, both human and robot, and discover... And that's when we arrived at this location. I see. Thank you for your exhaustiveness, Penny. My pleasure, Headmaster. Now, Mr. D. Kabigas, do I understand from Penny's story that you possess no memory or awareness of Remnant as a whole? What is the last thing you remember? And he was in his sleepwear. And someone turned him into a makeshift projectile. Sounds... preposterous. Hmm. You seem to have a theory, James. He's not lying. Or if he is, he's the best liar I've ever met. So either the impact knocked the memories out of him, so to speak. Or someone removed them. It does seem to be the most plausible explanation. Also, how did they get past the barrier? Those are questions that need answers indeed, but I don't see us getting to them in the course of the day. So, for the time being, I'd like the both of you to stay in Beacon. Both of them, Ospin? Penny is the first bond Mr. D. Kabigas made after his awakening, James. If his memories have actually been tampered with, I think it's important to give him as many anchors to the real world as possible, in preparation for when they'll go back to normal. Also, I understand you're worried about Penny's interactions. Beacon is certainly a more controlled environment than Vale, no? Granted, but- Unless there's something else you're not sharing with us which may constitute an impediment, 
I don't see any reason why Miss Petty shouldn't be allowed to spend the semester here at Beacon. I guess there are none. General... really? <laughs> as long as you behave. Uh, of course! I will! I will be good, General. Thank you so much! Hmm... if that's all, I guess I should inform Penny's father of the new arrangements. I will also have one of my teams inspect the location of the crash. No offense, Glinda. None taken, but I shall accompany you. Thank you, Headmaster. A thousand thanks. Don't thank me yet, children. I said I'd like you to stay at the school, but there are conditions. Despite your particular situation, this is still an academy for huntsmen and huntresses. To stay at Beacon, you will need to prove that you have the potential to stand at their side and learn. Headmaster, while I have confidence in my abilities, I doubt this is a reasonable request for David. He's not combat trained and he doesn't even know how to access his aura. Aura is an extension of the soul. All living things possess it, and huntsmen can use it to protect their bodies, heal their injuries, and power their weapons and semblances. But that's besides the point. We have a first year who managed to pass the entrance exam by only discovering Aura in the exam itself. So there's now a precedent. And regarding the combat training, can we be certain of that at this moment in time? Oh, that's right! I'll leave him in your hands then, Miss Pollandina. The amphitheater is currently free. I will have a room ready for you in the dormitories by the time you are finished. Thanks, Headmaster! The exam will take place on Sunday. Prepare yourself properly. There's always a place at Beacon for people willing to walk the path, Mr. D. Kabigas. Here we are. To verify your combat training, of course. That's according to your memories, right? Positive. Even if your brain has forgotten, there's a possibility that your body will still remember. That's why the Headmaster asked me to accompany you here. Combat training. But first... For it is in passing that we achieve immortality. Through this, we become a paragon of virtue, and glory to rise above all. Infinite in distance, and unbound by death, I release your soul, and by my shoulder, protect thee.
unlocked your aura using mine. I also recited an ancient oath that went with it. From a time when the process was used as a coming-of-age ritual, as the headmaster said, it will protect you and heal you. You have a finite quantity of it though, so try not to rely on it too much. Now, we spar. Be careful, David. I will tell you what I will do, but I will come at you seriously. Are you ready? How do you feel, David? Most likely. An expert in aura manipulation once described it as being surrounded by a blanket of warm power. I'm now going to give you a brief overview of your options during a battle. Pay attention! What you see below is your command bar on the left, and your aura box on the right. Your aura box allows you to keep track of your aura level. If you see it getting low, you should focus your mind and generate further aura. And remember that in a pinch, or if you feel a strong attack coming, you should hypothesize use of a defense position. But you can't win by just defending and healing. You got to attack. Most weapons will give you a close or ranged attack option. And in the future, you may use any special abilities you may come to learn with the semblance command. Also, remember that both weapons and skill may need you to recharge. And finally, you are also able to use items during battle. They have a range of effects on both enemy and foe. So don't hesitate to experiment. Did you manage to follow everything? Most likely, yes. It's an excessive amount of data for you to process. I think practice will help though, so go on. Defend myself? Not really. Because you'd miss. Aww, that's sweet. But don't worry about that. Just go ahead and practice to your heart's content. I see you're starting to get used to it. You're finally getting proficient! Don't stop now! Hmm, I think that's enough. Now that we're done with the warm-up, I will now defend myself and attack back. Okay, David? <laughs> That's all for today, then. You did great, David! The headmaster's hypothesis was correct. Your body has combat training. That's a pretty big hint. Or you were someone's apprentice. Either way, it should help us narrow down where to look for further information. What is it? You remembered something? So?
and <laughs> David, you're so old-fashioned. Teams and dormitories and combat academies like Beacon are all co-ed. Have been for decades. Excuse me? Well, Ruby is shorter than me. She has silver eyes and dark hair with red highlights. Affirmative. How did you know? Indeed. When I first met her, I thought she had some kind of weird skin condition, but it was really just her natural pigment and some weird lighting. Well, I suppose she's not that pale. Still, her clothes have colors that make her white tone that much more accentuated. Black and red, mostly. I think she could benefit from a more variegated outfit. One of her teammates has a great fashion sense. I think she could take some suggestions about... No, 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 no. I do not need fashion advice from Weiss. And my combat skirt is awesome. Ruby! <laughs> Ruby, I'm so happy to see you again. Happy. Two, but need air. Ruby, I'm so happy to see you. Then you didn't go away for the break. Break's almost over anyway. I would have had to come back, but more importantly, you. Me? The headmaster asked me to look for you to bring you to your room. And he told me that you're going to be staying at Beacon. That's super duper awesome. Oh, right! Yes, Headmaster Ozpin allowed us to stay here, provided we pass the exam, of course. We? Mister? As Penny's first friend in Vale and leader of Team Ruby, the coolest amalgam of the future Huntresses currently in Beacon, I have to inform you that I find you lacking as her future teammate. Because you lack something that I need to see. To fully evaluate you. Also, I may be a bit curious. Your weapon! Yes! Or like 
mine? Her name is Kristen Rose. Ain't she the most beautiful thing in the world? She's a scythe slash high powered snipe rifle with extra mid range rifle mode. <laughs> well, I know this girl. She's kind of awesome. Does not need fashion advice and also happens to know how to build these babies. Okay, your turn now. Show me yours! What do you mean you don't have a weapon? Even John had a weapon when he arrived. Ruby, David is... He's what? You see, this morning... And that's the gist of it. Wow. You sure he didn't drop from the moon or something? But... That's more boring. I said more boring. It's still very interesting. Kind of spooky, but all the best stories are. Shame you don't have a weapon, though. Much less creepy. We should provide you with a weapon, though. No hunter should be without a weapon. Both for survival and coolness factor. Never completely. My sister is a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist, but she has combat gloves. Without a weapon, it's real hard to use dust during fights. Oh, and dust is a mineral imbued with the power of the elements. You can use it raw, but it's pretty volatile like that. Cause no weapon, no dust. I don't think you'll find weapons like Ruby's scythe in any ordinary shop. Damn straight. So how about you build it for him, Ruby? Duh? You are perfectly able to build a functional one, if your scythe is any indication. Well, yeah, but... And I'm certain whatever you'll make will be more advanced and awe-inspiring than any commercially available weaponry we may acquire from a shop. <laughs> Can't deny that, no. So, what about I supply you with the materials and you build it? And you can choose the name. It's going to be the most awesome name. Great! We need it by the end of the week then. Thanks, Ruby. You're awesome! By the end of the week, it shall... Wait a minute. That's in three days! Ooh, I don't like working on a deadline. Oh, you will help and repay me all right, mister. Free all-nighters are a lot of cookies. What kind of weapon do you even want anyway? Sword, rifle, dagger... I need basic shape to work off of. Hey, you okay there? Um, Penny? Is he okay? David, what's wrong?
a whip. Are you alright? Maybe you still need some rest? Okay, but just in case we actually do need to make you lay down, I'd better show you your dorm room already. I agree. You sure? On a scale of 1 to 100, how would you rate your current discomfort? Hmm, a whip and a gauntlet. Hmm. Oh. My. God. This is going to be the best weapon ever! After Crescent Rose, of course. Well, here's your new pad. How'd you like it? It's really nice, Ruby. Are all the team rooms in Beacon like this? Kind of. But every team is allowed a certain level of customization. They're also expected to take care of any unscheduled cleaning, particularly in the kitchen. Understood. Come on, David. Let's get you in bed. Oh, I think you do. Considering the amount of activity and excitement you've had today, you probably need a longer than average period of rest. Alright then, now you stay here while I get you something to eat, alright? The mess hall should be open by now, but I'd better accompany you since you're not a student yet. Many thanks, Ruby. We'll be back soon, okay? Thank you. 